Hello everyone.、Uh, my name is Xiao Wei, and I'm a software engineer in Microsoft Cognitive Services team in cloud and AI. My manager is Li Jun, and our team works on computer vision research in the areas of、uh, vision language pre-training, image captioning, and object detection. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about、uh, our recent work on image captioning, including the technologies we used to substantially improve the performance for the image captioning service. And first, I will give an overview: what is the goal of image captioning, and what we need to learn for this task. Uh, in general, image captioning aims to generate a natural language sentence to describe the content in the image. Uh, for example, given this image as input, the caption output is a baseball player catching a ball.、Uh, this capability is required in many applications that need to translate images into words, but it is also very challenging. So,、uh, let's consider an exercise. So,、uh, how would you describe an image to another person who cannot see it? Uh, imagine that the other person cannot see any objects in the image, so you will need to visually identify every detail and decide what to describe.、Uh, take this image as an example.、Uh, you see a lot of scenes in the image.、Uh, one person on the left is standing and talking, and there is also a poster stand next to her, and she is looking at the poster.、Uh, other people are sitting on chairs and listening, and they are all in a room. And in the background, there are windows and buildings outside the window. Now we see that an image could contain lots of information, and when you want to describe it clearly, first you will need to know exactly what everything is, where it is, what it's doing in relation to other objects, and note other attributes like color or position of the objects, and if it's in the foreground or background. Uh, moreover, given all this information, you have to decide what is more important to describe and what is not. To generate a caption like a person giving a presentation to a group of people, you need to combine all these above skills. And this exercise shows that the image captioning is a complex task and requires a wide range of knowledge. And to translate the skills into artificial intelligence,、uh, we need to train the model to learn the relationships between words and visual objects. The model should be able to recognize everything, which is the ultimate goal of computer vision. And the model should also generate a fluent sentence,、uh, which is studied in natural language processing. So the image captioning problem actually lies in the intersection of these two fields. And it has attracted great attention from both vision and language communities. In today's talk,、uh, we will uh, talk about uh, how to improve the performance of image captioning with recent vision language pre-training approaches.、Uh, we will cover our latest work,、uh, Object Semantics Aligned Pre-training, which is short as OSCA.、Uh, This method uses large-scale image text pairs to significantly improve the performance of general image captioning.、Uh, we will also cover another work of、uh, visual vocabulary pre-training,、uh, which is short as VIVO.、Uh, this method is developed for novel object captioning in the absence of caption annotations, and we will discuss the key principles to improve the performance. And how we address the core challenges in caption generation.、Uh, to build an image captioning model,、uh, previous works proposed to use、uh, the pre-trained convolutional neural networks to extract the image features, and then use recurrent neural networks to process the image features and generate a sequence of words one by one in the autoregressive manner. Uh, here, the image feature can be a grid feature map,、uh, which is usually the last layer feature output of a resonant model. And in recent years,、uh, people also use the detection model,、uh, such as the faster RCN model, to detect the bounding boxes in the image and extract the features from the detected boxes.、Uh, this is called image region feature. Uh, this kind of、uh, image region feature has gained a wide popularity after it showed a superior performance on several public benchmarks. 
Uh, another important trend is pre-training. Uh, that is uh, to pre-train the model on massive amounts of data before fine-tuning on downstream tasks. Uh, it, ha it has been shown in different fields that uh, pre-training helps to learn better representations and thus benefits the downstream tasks. Uh, for example, uh, ImageNet pre-training is widely used for computer vision tasks such as uh, object detection and segmentation. Uh, the pre-trained model birth is widely used in uh, language tasks. And lastly, uh, the pre-training on image text pairs has been popular for vision language tasks, such as the visual question answering and image captioning. And uh, uh, in the language community, uh, pre-training word embeddings uh, has been studied for quite a long time, uh, including Elmo, GPT, and BERT. Uh, especially with the success of BERT, the first pre-train then fine-tune scheme has gained more popularity from wider audience. Uh, one of the differences between BERT and the previous uh, pre-trained models is the use of bidirectional attention in the transformer layers. Uh, that is, for each token, it can attend to all the tokens in the input sequence. Uh, in this way, the representation of the token depends on all the tokens before and after it. And the BERT model has two model sizes. Uh, the BERT base model consists of uh, 12 transformer encoder layers and result in uh, 110 million parameters. And the BERT large model consists of uh, 24 layers with uh, 340 million parameters. And uh, uh, to pre-train the BERT model on large-scale text corpora, uh, the input is a sequence of words. And the input uh, may consist of one sentence or a pair of sentences. And in the input, uh, we use the special token CLS here to uh, indicate the start of the sentence. And the special token SCP, which uh, shown here, to indicate the end of the sentence. And during training, uh, some of the tokens in the sentences are randomly masked. And after feeding the input to the model, uh, we get a sequence of hidden representations corresponding to the uh, input tokens. And there are two pre-training tasks. Uh, the first is to predict the masked tokens in the sentence. Uh, this is done by getting the hidden representations corresponding to the mask tokens and transforming them with a linear layer to predict the token ID in vocabulary. Uh, the second is uh, conducted on a pair of sentences, uh, such as A and B. Uh, this is to predict whether sentence B is the next sentence of uh, sentence A. And here, the first token, uh, CLS, is used for the binary classification in the next sentence prediction. Uh, the BERT model has been fine-tuned on a variety of uh, natural language processing tasks and achieved state-of-the-art results. And this validates the improvement of the word representations learned by BERT. Uh, now we look at uh, how to adapt the approach of BERT in vision language pre-training. Uh, the goal of vision language pre-training is to learn cross-model representations of both image and text input, and which will be adapted to serve various downstream uh, vision language tasks by fine-tuning. Uh, vision language pre-training is typically conducted on text image pairs. For the text part, the input is processed in the same way as in BERT to get a sequence of uh, word embeddings. And for the image part, uh, we use pre-trained object detection model to detect objects in the image and extract the region features. Uh, then we use a linear layer to transform the extracted region features into the same dimension as the word embeddings. And after we get the features of input from the two modalities, uh, visual features and uh, uh, word embeddings, uh, to learn the cross-model representation, uh, we concatenate the word and the image features into a sequence and then use the multi-layer transformer model to conduct pre-training. 
Uh, the model takes a uh, visual features and its paired text as input and relies on the self-attention mechanism to learn image text alignment and produce the cross-model contextualized representations. Uh, during pre-training, uh, it's straightforward to use uh, similar objectives as birds and the bidirectional attention. But for different downstream tasks, we may need some extra changes. For example, uh, for the understanding tasks like uh, visual question answering, uh, it's fine to use the bidirectional attention. Uh, that is, uh, each token can attend to all the tokens in the input. However, uh, for the generation tasks like uh, image captioning, uh, to simulate the generation process, uh, we have to use sequence-to-sequence -sequence attention mask. Uh, that is, uh, we only allow tokens to attend to positions before it, but not after it. And this is implemented by modifying the attention mask. The image part can only see the image, and the word tokens in the text part can see the image and the words before it, including itself. But the word cannot see the words after it. During inference, the model will take the image features as input and generate the words from left to right in the autoregressive manner. And therefore, uh, by altering the attention mask, understanding tasks and the generation tasks are unified in a single framework. And as vi uh, vision language pre-training is crucial to the performance on downstream vision language tasks, uh, there has been a lot of work on improving the pre-training method. Uh, here we propose OSCA. Uh, this method has created the state of art on Coco Caption. And OSCA proposes to use object text detected in, in the image as input. Uh, so unlike other vision language pre-training methods that use uh, image text pair as input, uh, the input of OSCA contains three parts. Uh, first is the caption sentence, and second is the detected object text, and the third is the image features. Uh, here, the object text are the language representation of the detected visual concepts. And in the paper, it is shown that uh, object text can be used as anchor points to ease the learning of semantic alignments uh, between images and the text. And this is the key reason why OSCAR outperforms previous pre-training methods. And these figures illustrate the process that the OSCAR model represents an uh, image text pair into semantic space. Uh, here, figure A shows an example of image and the paired text. Uh, in the image, the object detection model can detect a dog and a couch. And the word dog and couch also appear in the text, a dog is sitting on a couch. Uh, in the figure C, uh, we show the semantic spaces of both visual features and word embeddings. Uh, in the upper figure, uh, the yellow triangle is the visual feature of the couch in the image, and the right square is the visual feature of the dog in the image. Uh, in this example image, the two visual features are very close to each other uh, because of the overlap regions. And this renders ambiguities for the extracted visual features. Uh, however, as shown in the lower side in figure C, dog and couch are distinctive in the word embedding space. Uh, again, here the yellow triangle is the embedding of the word couch in the sentence, and the red square is the embedding of the word dog in the sentence. Uh, so here we can see that the word semantic, rep uh, semantic space is more representative than the image region feature space uh, for these objects. Uh, as a result, showing in, as shown in figure B, uh, when we try to learn the alignment between visual and text inputs, the object text can be used as anchor points to ease the learning of alignment. And here is the uh, Tisney visualization of the cross-model representation space learned by two different models. Uh, on the left side is the baseline model without using object tags, and on the right side is the Oscar model. Uh, here the plus symbol is the image features, and the circle symbol is the text features. Image and the text features of the same category share the uh, same color.
Uh, in the figure, uh, we can observe that uh, by using OSCA, the image and text features of the same object are closer to each other. Uh, for example, uh, for the category person, uh, in the baseline model, the distance between image and text features is large, uh, but in OSCA, the distance is much smaller. And now we will describe uh, how to train the OSCA model. Uh, the pre-training of OSCA uses uh, 6.5 million image text pairs. Uh, the training data is combined from several public data sets, including uh, conceptual captions, uh, VQA and GQA. Uh, the input of the model is word tag region triplet. And there are two losses used in pre-training. The first is the mask token loss to predict the mask masked token in the text or object text. And the second is the contrastive loss to predict if the text and the text are matching with the image. After pre-training, uh, the model can be fine-tuned on various uh, downstream tasks, including both the understanding tasks like VQA and the generation tasks like uh, image captioning. And uh, for the captioning task, uh, as we talked in previous slides, uh, the attention mask is modified so that uh, for each token, uh, it can attend to tokens uh, to the left, all the image regions and object tags, but it cannot attend to tokens to the right to uh, simulate the generation process. And during inference, uh, the captioning model takes the image features and detected text as input, uh, which are the same as in fine-tuning. And for the text part, at the beginning of generation, the input is the CLS token uh, here, which is the special token used to indicate the start of the sentence. And this CLS token is followed by the mask token. Then we run the model to get the prediction corresponding to the mask token position. Now we get the prediction corresponding to the mask token. And then we will use this uh, predicted, predicted token to replace the mask token. And after this, we attach another mask token after the predicted token. Uh, and also at the end of the sentence to predict the next token. Here, uh, you can see here we get the next predicted token, token two. And then replace the mask token with the token two. And this step is repeated until we get the EOS token, which is also a special token to uh, used to, to indicate the end of the sentence. Uh, this process will also stop if we reach the maximum length of the sentence. After fine tuning, uh, we can see that the OSCAR model achieved the new state of arts on six different downstream tasks, uh, including image text retrieval, uh, image captioning on COCO, no caps, and uh, visual question answering, and NLVR2. Uh, here are some example images of the uh, image captioning models. Uh, the baseline model here is uh, uh, use the vision language pre-training, but without object text. Uh, the yellow colored objects appear in both the baseline model and the OSCAR model and the blue colored objects appear in only OSCAR and the text, and the green colored objects appear in the text only. Uh, we see that the captions generated by OSCAR covers uh, more object categories and result in more detailed descriptions of the images than the baseline. And this is uh, due to the use of accurate and diverse object tags. Uh, because they are the anchor points in the word embedding space, uh, which can get the text generation process. Uh, so, so far, uh, we see how to improve the performance of general image captioning by leveraging uh, visual language pre vision language pre-training on large scale image text pairs. And the performance of the captioning model has been significantly improved by using the OSCA and it can achieve a really impressive results when it is trained on large-scale paired image caption training data. So are we already satisfied, satisfied with the current captioning framework? Uh, the answer is no.
Uh, the reason is that uh, in real-world images, uh, there are a wide variety of visual objects, and many of them are unseen in the captioning training data. Uh, for models relying on large amounts of image caption pairs to obtain good performance, uh, it could be too expensive to collect enough training data for all the different categories. And this raises the challenge of novel object captioning. Uh, that is, uh, how to generate captions that can describe a novel object's unseen in the paired image caption training data. Uh, let's take this image as an example. Uh, here, person and coach are common objects appearing in the widely used COCO caption data set. Uh, so a model trained on COCO can faithfully describe images containing objects such as person and coach. Uh, however, the model will fail to generate a reasonable caption for the image containing an accordion, since the object accordion is unseen in the caption training corpora. And to address this problem, uh, we propose a new training scheme. Uh, we call it VIVO, which is short for Visual Vocabulary Pre-Training. Compared to conventional vision language pre-training methods, our pre-training method shares the same motivation to learn the cross-modality semantic alignment between image and text. Uh, however, instead of uh, pre-training on image caption pairs, uh, our training scheme uses image tag pairs. So our method does not rely on caption annotations for pre-training. Uh, it can leverage uh, more datasets with only tag annotations to learn the novel objects, uh, such as the vision objects, uh, which are originally developed for the image tagging or object detection tasks. Those kinds of uh, computer vision datasets with image tag pairs are readily available at large scale, uh, such as the ImageNet, OpenImages, and Object365. Uh, they contain uh, not only more diverse images, but also much richer visual concepts in their labels uh, compared to the uh, caption datasets available. Uh, moreover, uh, we can also leverage uh, large amounts of unlabeled images and paired with machine-generated text. And this makes it possible to use unlimited large number of training data. Now we talk about uh, what is the proposed visual vocabulary. Uh, here, uh, we define visual vocabulary as a joint embedding space for visual and text modalities. The embedding space is con conceptually uh, illustrated in the upper figure. In the embedding space, uh, image region features and tags of semantically similar objects are mapped into vectors that are close to each other. For example, uh, the visual representations of person or men from the image and the word embeddings of the tag person and men are all close to each other. And similarly, uh, the visual representations of the image region according and the word embedding of the accordion and the instrument are also close to each other. And in pre-training, we leverage large amounts of image tag pairs to learn a rich visual vocabulary. Uh, including the novel objects such as accordion. And these novel objects are colored, are colored in yellow here. Uh, once the visual vocabulary is pre-trained, uh, we can fine-tune the model using uh, image caption pairs for caption generation. Uh, know that the data set used to f for fine-tuning could be very small and only covers limited visual concepts. Uh, so the objects present in a uh, fine-tuning dataset are only a small subset of the most commonly occurred objects in the learned visual vocabulary. And here, these uh, this, uh, limited visual concepts are colored in blue in the figure. Although these uh, novel objects do not appear in fine-tuning, uh, during inference, the model can still generalize to describe novel objects because of the pre-trained visual vocabulary. Uh, here, the image at inference time contains a similar scene of people sitting in couch and novel objects of accordion. This scene is present in fine-tuning, and the novel object is not present in fine-tuning, but it is learned in pre-training. 
visual vocabulary pre-training aims to learn a joint embed in a joint representation of visual and text input. And here we use a multi-layer transformer model uh, to train to train it. Uh, the overview of our model architecture is shown in the figure. It consists of uh, multiple transformer encoder layers to encode the input into a feature vector and followed by a linear layer with softmax to predict the word token. Now we describe how to uh, train our model. Uh, our approach uses a two-stage training scheme. Uh, it consists of uh, vivo pre-training and fine-tuning. Uh, now we illustrate our approach using the example shown in the image. And first, uh, in the pre-training stage, uh, which is shown in figure A, uh, the model learns to label image regions using tags such as person accordion. And the training data is image tag pairs from large-scale vision data sets such as open images. And the novel object like accordion is included here in the pre-training. Then in the fine-tuning stage, uh, as shown in figure B, uh, the model is trained on small data sets of uh, image caption pairs, such as uh, the COCO. Uh, given the image caption pair and the corresponding object tags detected, such as the person and the dog, the model learns to generate a sentence conditioned on the detected visual objects and tags. Uh, for example, here the caption is A holding B, uh, here, A and B are two mask tokens to predict. Here, uh, the, mas uh, the mask token A could attend to the person in the image and the tag person. And similarly, uh, the mask token B could attend to the uh, dog in the image and the tag dog. And in this way, the model learns to compose a sentence uh, conditioned on the image and the text from the image caption pairs. Uh, it also learns to recognize novel objects that are unseen in the image caption pairs, but seen in image tag pre-training data in this example. Uh, as a result, uh, as shown in figure C, uh, at inference time, the model can recognize the objects such as person and accordion and compose familiar uh, constituents in a novel way to form a caption, a person holding accordion. Uh, in summary, the model can generate captions for novel objects because it achieves compositional generalization. Uh, that is, it has the ability to make novel compositions of familiar constituents, uh, which allows for zero-shot generalization to novel objects for image captioning. Um, here we introduce uh, how we do the uh, how we implement the pre-training algorithm. Uh, during pre-training, uh, giving a bag of tags and image regions, uh, we randomly mask some of the tags, and the training objective is to predict the masked tags. Uh, however, uh, unlike words in captions, uh, tags are not ordered. And this unordered nature may result in ambiguity in tag prediction when two tags are masked out simultaneously. Uh, for example, if the masked token are person accordion, uh, we can predict the first as person, second as accordion, or the other way around, uh, the first predicted as accordion and the second predicted as, as person. And to resolve this issue, we propose to use Hungarian matching laws to formulate the tag prediction as a set matching problem. Uh, for the predicted tokens P and the target tokens T, uh, we will find a permutation of target tokens to minimize the cost function. Then the loss is calculated as the cross-entropy loss between prediction and target tokens after permutation. And to uh, evaluate our model's performance on novel object captioning, uh, we conduct experiments on no caps. Uh, here, the no caps benchmark is developed to evaluate novel object captioning at scale. Uh, the training data for no caps is the COCO dataset and the open images dataset. Uh, COCO consists of uh, image caption pairs, and the open images contains uh, bounded boxes and image level tags. Uh, the validation and testing images are selected from open images validation set. 
It contains、uh, nearly 400 novel objects that are not、uh, rarely seen in the Coco dataset.、Uh, it is also worth noting that、uh, in NoCaps,、uh, no additional image caption pairs can be used for training except Coco.、Uh, so the so the conventional vision language pre-training methods cannot be used for NoCaps、uh, because they rely on large-scale image caption pairs from datasets like、uh, conceptual captions. And each image in the validation and the test set in no caps is labeled with 11 captions. Ten of them are used as ground truths, and the left one is used to measure the human performance. And this is the human baseline we show in experiments.、Uh, we compare our method with UpDown and Oscar.、Uh, UpDown and Oscar are the state-of-art results on the no caps benchmark. The training data for baselines is the Coco dataset. And we use open images for vivo pre-training and Coco for fine-tuning.、Uh, following prior settings,、uh, we also report the results after our model is optimized using SCST,、uh, which is short for self-critical sequence training, and generates the captions using constrained beam search,、uh, which is short for CBS here. Uh, the evaluation results on no caps validation and test sets are shown in the table. Uh, by leveraging vivo pre-training on the open images dataset,、uh, our method has achieved a significant improvement compared to other baselines. Our plain version, vivo, already outperforms UpDown plus Elmo plus CBS and Oscar by a large margin. And our best results are the new state of art and surpasses the human CIDAR score on the overall dataset for the first time. Uh, it is worth noting that a、uh, constrained beam search brings absolute gains of 17.8 for the up-down method and 15.5 for the Oscar method, but it only improves vivo by 3.8. And this suggests that our model is more capable of generating captions with novel objects without explicitly adding any constraints. And here is the results shown in the leaderboard. Uh, in the following work,、uh, we achieved、uh, even better results with Vivo by using improved visual features.、Uh, the visual features are extracted by a faster RCA model, better trained for vision language tasks, and this again validates the effect effectiveness of our proposed Vivo method. Here,、uh, we select some images containing novel objects and visualize the caption results.、Uh, in the figures, the The B B stands for the baseline model without vivo pre-training, and V stands for our proposed model with vivo pre-training.、Uh, the novel object is colored in red in the captions, and it is clear that vivo pre-trained model is more capable of recognizing novel objects.、Uh, moreover, we show that our model can round the recognized objects into image regions. Uh, here we calculate the similarity between the representations of a pair of image regions and the object tag.、Uh, we highlight the pairs with high similarity scores in the figure. For each object, the bounding box color is brighter when the similarity score is higher, and these results show that our model can recognize novel objects and also localize the novel objects in image regions. And to get an overview of the learned visual vocabulary,、uh, or in other words,、uh, to get an overview of the joint embedding space of the visual and the text input,、uh, we vis we visualize the feature spaces using Tisney.、Uh, in each figure,、uh, we use an image patch to represent the corresponding image feature, and use a marker to represent the word embedding. Here we use the same color to indicate the same object category.、Uh, the left hand side is the feature space without fine tuning for the captioning task, and the right and the right hand side is the feature space after fine tuning for the image captioning on Coco.、Uh, we see the first baseline model is random、uh, is randomly initialized and without vivo pre training. Uh, we see that the visual and the text features are separate and not aligned at all.
Uh, the second baseline model is initialized with birds, but without vivo pre-training. Uh, the two modalities are not aligned at first, but the alignment is uh, improved after fine-tuning, and especially for the objects uh, frequently occur in the caption corpora. Uh, however, uh, for novel objects, the alignment is much worse, uh, such as a uh, grape, a strawberry, and a job. And this shows the limitation of conventional captioning framework on the problem of novel object captioning. Uh, now we look at our proposed model. Uh, the left side is after vivo pre-training. Compared to all the baselines uh, uh, previously mentioned, uh, vivo pre-training learns a better cross-model alignment, uh, but only use the image tag pairs. And the right-hand side is after fine-tuning, and with fine-tuning on image caption pairs, the alignment is further improved. Uh, it is clear that the two uh, modalities are better aligned with our proposed method, and uh, especially for the novel objects. Uh, here we can see, uh, compared to previous baselines for novel objects such as uh, grape, strawberry, and drum, uh, now the distance between visual and text features gets much smaller. In summary, uh, in this talk, uh, first uh, we present our recent work on visual language pre-training to substantially improve the performance on general image captioning. And second, we propose a vivo pre-training, that is a cross-modality uh, learning technique. Unlike existing vision language pre-training methods, uh, vivo pre-training can be conducted without caption annotations. This opens the possibility of using vision datasets at a much larger scale. And third, uh, we conduct extensive experiments and show that vivo pre-training is the key to improve performance on novel object captioning. And our best model surpasses human setter score on the benchmark for the first time. Uh, here, uh, we provide uh, more images uh, if you want to learn more about the performance of our new captioning model. Uh, you can see this image and the generated caption is uh, a statue of uh, liberty in front of a city. Uh, here we color the novel objects in red. So here the statue of liberty is the novel object recognized by the model. And for this image, uh, the caption is a teddy bear wearing a bow tie. Uh, here both teddy bear and a tie as novel objects. And in this image, uh, the generated caption is uh, two monkeys with their faces touching. A monkey is the novel object recognized by the model. And in this, uh, for this image, the generated caption is an elephant and its calf in a field. And here the elephant, uh, calf, field are all the novel objects. Okay, uh, now uh, uh, let's look at a video demo of the new captioning model. Uh, here you will see uh, more examples uh, of the caption results from the new captioning model.
here uh, we provide uh, more resources uh, if you want to learn more about the performance of our new model and uh, how to use our model in your own projects. Uh, here, uh, this is the link of the demonstration website uh, if you want to test how the model works on your own images. And you can upload your images in this website and see the generated captions. And this is the documentation page for the image captioning service. Uh, it is shipped in computer vision cognitive services. Uh, you can call this endpoint to get the description of the image. And it provides both REST API and the SDK, so it's very easy to use the model in your own project. Uh, we hope that uh, everyone can enjoy the latest technology of artificial intelligence and in a convenient way. Uh, so no matter what areas you are working on, you can integrate the state-of-art artificial intelligence model in your own projects uh, by using our cognitive services. And our code and model are also available on GitHub. Uh, you can go to this repository if you want to, uh, if you are interested in more details in uh, implementation. And you can also fine tune the model on your own data. Uh, here are some products in Microsoft that use our captioning service. Uh, this feature is called uh, Auto Alt Text. Uh, it is available in Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. And when you insert an image in these uh, apps, uh, it will automatically generate a description. And this is one of the uh, accessibility features we provide in Office products. And our model is also used in Seeing AI, and it is a mobile app designed for uh, vision impaired people. Uh, it helps people to see through the camera with the help of various computer vision technologies. Okay, uh, so this is the end of uh, the tutorial. And in the uh, live Q&A session, uh, my manager Li Juan and I will both uh, join the uh, Q&A session to answer all your questions. Uh, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for attending our webinar today on recent advances in image captioning. And uh, the, now it's a live q and I'm Li Zhen Wang, and this is Xiao Wei Hu. So over the next 15 minutes, we are going to be answering top questions submitted by the audience. Let's get started. So the first question is, um, uh, uh, do you consider image captioning as solved the problem um, like ImageNet? Uh, and uh, or when do you think it will be solved? I think it is a good question. So uh, first, thanks for the question. And to be honest, we don't think that image captioning is a solved problem. Yeah. So. Um, what we observe is that even with our best model, we still see those kind of unsatisfied generated captions. So because still, um, uh, it's it's depend on the the data and the model to learn to learn how to generate captions. And uh, you can also imagine um, for the images in the wild, the, there can be a large variety of objects. And the visual concept so far current, uh, currently does not cover in our pre-training. And uh, so we think that current vivo pre-training is uh, the first step. Um, but still, we need to scale up the pre-training and uh, make the um, captioning really uh, descriptive and uh, and uh, achieve the human human parity. So 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 right now we. Uh, on the no caps, so we surpass the um, CIDA score compared with the human score, but uh, that's only the, the CIDA metric. So, yeah. Shall we please go ahead for the second question? Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, I will uh, answer the question uh, about. Uh, oh, okay, I will answer the question about uh, uh, where you uh, present some comparison between uh, BERT and the GBT3. Yeah, uh, because here uh, in our um, in our tasks we study the vision language pre-training. Uh, which uses like image captioning as the downstream task. But since that uh, BERT and GPT-3 are purely language models and it only has the transformer part, so it's not uh, that equivalent to our model uh, for the vision language tasks. And uh, here in our model, we only choose the uh, same transformer structure as BERT. Uh, uh, but uh, we did not uh, compare it with the GPT-3, but we think, uh, yeah, it is a good direction to uh, try the different kind of transformer structures in the vision language model. Okay, mm -hmm. that's it. Okay. Uh, another question is that, um, do you have a data set of all generated captions so that we can try the inverse task, uh, reconstructing images from novel captions? So, uh, I think, thanks for the question. Um, there are some, uh, This I think this is a very uh, hard research area right now. So trying to synthesize or rendering images from captions. So like the um, uh, people are aware that the most recent uh, uh, D-A-L-L-E, uh, that's the work from OpenAI. So um, trying to give, give a text caption, trying to render the images. So um, uh, if you want to generate a data set with uh, generated captions, you can, number one, try our OSCA GitHub. So we have released our image caption model and code. You can use that to generate captions for your image data set. And, uh, also, you, you, you may want to consider just to simply call our uh, cognitive service cloud endpoint to, to generate a caption. So that's even, even more simple, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I see uh, there's a question uh, uh, from Rory and the question is, uh, can you explain how the captioning system works with low quality photos? Are there any observable limitations with black and white images or lower pixel density? Similarly, has the image captioning system explored with art? Yeah, I think this is a really great question. And uh, this is about the uh, limitation of current uh, models. That is, uh, it only has a good performance when the testing data is somewhat uh, has the similar distribution with the training data. Yeah, and uh, for our captioning model, I think it, uh, it also suffers from such kind of problem uh, we, we call it as domain adaptation. And uh, for the uh, low quality images and the black and white images, I think it, it depends on if these images are included in the training data. And in our uh, training, uh, first, uh, we depend on the object detection model to extract image features. So maybe the app object detection model is not very good at uh, uh, detecting features from the like the low quality images or the art images. Yeah, but uh, I think we can solve this problem by by adding uh, those kinds of images into training data. Yeah, thank you for this question. Another question um, from Paul Kitt. Uh, is there a relation between the complexity of the object detection model used and the performance of the model? The answer is yes. So we, we do observe the, the model, the object detection model is very critical because it provides the visual feature to the transformer for this kind of multimodality alignment. So, in our object detection model, the so object detection model right now is a uh, uh, fast uh model. So, and uh, the model need to be uh, fine-tuned on the VG data set in order to be able to 
um, propose more category, object categories, and also have some flavor of big, this kind of attribute um, features. So, um, yeah, this is very, very important. And, uh, and we recently have another paper uh, in archive. I, I can uh, share the link later. It's, uh, we call it V, v in VL. So uh, make the visual matters in vision language. So that, that paper uh, focus on improving the visual feature extraction. We found that this can improve the vision language uh, model performance significantly. Yeah, thank you again for the questions. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay, I see. Uh, oh, I will pick uh, this uh, question. Uh, the question is uh, in the video, uh, captions uh, in before section mostly uh, consisted saying a close up of something. Uh, what data set modifications you had to do to achieve these results? Uh, first, uh, we did not uh, do the data set modification. But I think, uh, yeah, but I, you are right that a close up of something is a, a very uh, uh, is uh, is usually observed uh, in the generated captions. But I think it depends on the data sources because in the uh, in the training data we use, uh, they consist a lot of uh, uh, captions like a close up of something. So the model uh, learns to generate the captions uh, in a similar way to describe it. Yeah, this uh, is uh, the answer. Okay. And a question from Alan, uh, which tools and applications are better to integrate a uh, computer vision program to create a mobile application or a desk desktop application? Uh, this is a good question. So, um, so as uh, we are from the Microsoft Cognitive Service Team, so um, it is very simple and easy. You can integrate our cloud endpoint into your mobile and the task applications. So the, the computer vision cloud API actually provides the image captioning capability and also the image tagging, object detection, those kind of a basic function in computer vision. So in a, in a, a iOS app called Scene AI, actually that, that is, the, is the mobile app that we, we try to integrate many this kind of cloud API into this kind of iOS mobile app to let that, that thing AI is trying to help the low vision people and uh, to recognize and uh, describe the things around them. So I think that that's so the, um, tip, uh, the short answer is that just try out cloud API. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I will take the next question. Uh, the question is, uh, can OSCAR be used for fine-tuning on novel tasks, uh, like tasks it wasn't fine-tuned on earlier, like BERT is used for summarization? Yeah, the answer is, uh, of course, yes. Uh, yeah, uh, and uh, in the paper of OSCAR, uh, we, we, have, uh, showed, uh, we have shown our fine-tuning results on seven downstream uh, vision language tasks including the uh, image captioning, uh, uh, visual question answering, and multi-model image retrieval, and uh, 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 some other, ta uh, some other uh, downstream fine-tuning tasks. And uh, uh, Oscar has outperformed the, the state of art uh, results at that time on, on the seven downstream tasks. So uh, we think the pre-trained Oscar model is uh, very, uh, has very, uh, has learned a very good uh, visual uh, visual text alignment, and so it can be fine tuned on the uh, downstream vision language tasks with a very good performance. Yeah, and of course you can try it on your own data or your own task to see it how how it performs. Thank you. Okay, so um, the other question is that uh, do you plan to extend uh, extrapolate to videos from images, so and understand it as another level of complexity. Um, that's a that's a good question. So, so as you know that uh, 
today we are mainly talk about uh, those kind of image language pre-training and uh, also downstream is downstream task is image captioning or novel image captioning novel object captioning and uh, um, since uh, 2019 so the video language pre-training and also the downstream task are also very hard area so uh, people are using the video and the video transcription to do this kind of video language pre-training. So we are looking into this area and uh, and uh, the this kind of complexity you can imagine. So the the data scale is huge. So that makes the training that um, uh, much more heavy heavier than the the image la image language pre-training. But this can because that the once the temporal is being added, you can imagine it can solve things like the video captioning, describe a video uh, using la natural language, and it can also do those kind of video recommendation, video, uh, video text retrieval, and uh, even kind of like the uh, action recognition. Yeah, so it's a it's very interesting area. So yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, I will take the uh, next question. Uh, it's from uh, Raymond. Uh, the question is, since you are training on millions of image text combinations, how are you sure your test data is different? Uh, maybe you are just uh, retrieving captions from the training set. Uh, yeah, this is a very good question. Yeah, and we, uh, uh, because we really want to uh, avoid uh, this issue, uh, so in our uh, in our data pre-processing, uh, we have very carefully cleaned the uh, pre-training and fine-tuning data to ensure that there is no overlap uh, between the pre-training and fine-tuning stage and the uh, testing stage, uh, and we have uh, uh, because uh, we have uh, carefully identified the image IDs and the we also. Uh, use a, a visual feature extractor to remove the uh, images with, with very similar features uh, as from the testing set. So I think uh, it is, yeah, it is a very important uh, thing to uh, make sure that the training data and the testing data do not overlap. And we have done this in our uh, all the ex uh, in all of our experiments. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, another question is, um, do you plan integrate your work in large web bases like social network, like Facebook recently, or image search, Bing or Google? Um, uh, yeah, I think um, you, you imagine, so it's a, it's a cloud endpoint, so you can it integrate it uh, everywhere. So in the, in the social, Social uh, network app or in the um, mobile app, desktop app, you can do the integration. Um, so uh, currently, we are integrating this capability in Office. So uh, if you are using Office, when you open your PowerPoint, your Word document, uh, even your Outlook, if you insert an image into your PowerPoint, the the PowerPoint will call the image captioning. Uh, cloud API and generating the alt text, uh, auto alt text for that image. So that helps improve the accessibility of our whole office uh, product. So uh, yeah, it, this uh, very similar function functionality you can find in uh, in the Word document and Office when you write an email. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, I will take uh, this question. Uh, the question is, uh, is it possible to uh, throw uh, more than one uh, captions? Uh, for example, assuming you get close probabilities for possible caption outputs. Uh, yes, uh, uh, actually, uh, we we also use uh, yeah uh, we also use the beam search uh, method in our caption generation, and by setting the a uh, beam search size as like uh, as a larger number. Uh, for example, at five, we can get uh, a lot of uh, candidate captions, and uh, you can compare all the candidates and uh, output the one with the highest probability. Yeah. 
This is my answer. Um, I saw a question ask, uh, can this model also be used in medical image diagnos diagnosis? So I, I think that's a very interesting question. So we haven't uh, done any experiment for medical image, but uh, um, we believe that, um, so this is trying to align the language with the visual feature. So even for medical image, if we can have this kind of pair, it's not necessary to be a text sentence to describe the medical. It can be text, right? Like what we did for vivo. As long as you have this kind of text description along with the medical image, yeah, if you can try such model, it will help you to do such kind of uh, analysis and maybe also can gener generate those kind of medical image uh, descri description. Thank you. Uh, I think the time is uh, approaching. 50 minutes. Yeah, uh, I believe it looks like we now we only have time for one more question today. So we can you pick the last question? Oh, okay. So uh, uh, I will take the uh, questions uh, from uh, Tiango. Uh, the question is, uh, where you test the model on domain specific image data with adapted pre training, uh, for example, the satellite imaging? Yeah, uh, I think this is a, a good question. Uh, that is, uh, for uh, different kinds of images, uh, we may uh, need a different kind of pre training. Yeah, but I think uh, another direction is to uh, train, uh, is to train a universal uh, large scale uh, uh, pre trained uh, model. And the, in the pre-training, we can uh, we could contain as many types of images as possible. That is, it could include uh, both the uh, natural images and the satellite images. And it's it will be interesting to see that if uh, this kind of uh, universal pre-training also contributes uh, to the performance improvement. Thank you. Mm, okay. Um, yeah. So. Thank you all for attending today. Uh, we appreciate your participation and interest in this webinar. Um, if you are interested to learn more, uh, we have list uh, some great resource in the resource list to the right of your screen. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing how you build on this research and involve the vision language pre-training and uh, image captioning space. So. Yeah, uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.